Live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's The Cube, covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back everyone, live here at VMworld 2016. This is The Cube, our flagship program. From SiliconANGLE, we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Peter Burris. Our next guest is Ratmir Timoshev and Doug Hazelman, Vice President of Product uh, Strategy. And uh, Ratmir, Cube alumni, co-founder, entrepreneur of Veeam. Uh, very big, successful product. Big party tonight, legendary uh, VMworld party you guys have. It's, right. Some say it's almost too big to go. No one goes there anymore. It's too crowded. <laughs> um, Welcome back to theCUBE. Oh, thank you, uh, thanks for having us. Get the us plug show. in for the party. But uh, you guys are doing extremely well. Um, interesting story, we talked in the past about your success in the VMware ecosystem, primary show for you guys. But now as you guys are starting to grow, of course, now we're hearing from Pat Gelsinger, this is not your grandfather's VMware anymore. They, from a one product company to a multiple set of products. How are you guys navigating that landscape for Veeam? Yeah, I mean, we see that this is uh, also a very great opportunity for us to continue our innovation path. So over the last 10 years, Veeam has been known as the disruptor and innovator. So going from backup to availability market, creating this new market where uh, all the applications, all the data needs to be recovered within seconds and minutes. So we see as our customers are moving to hybrid cloud, there is more opportunity for us to innovate uh, in this market, and uh, today's announcement, or yesterday's announcement of VMware about the cloud foundation, we see that this greatest opportunity for us. So take play. a minute, guys, to explain the disrupting, key disrupting enabler that you guys have built, and what will be the next enabler yeah. for Veeam. So, so I mean, if, if you go back to, from a, a data protection perspective, you know, when VMware first came out, people were using their, their legacy backup systems and doing it the way they always had but you know, they weren't leveraging the power of virtualization and, and snapshots and a number of different technologies. So we really came, up, came in and disrupted the entire market. If you look at what you know, companies like Veritas were doing at the time, you know, they, they were late to the virtualization game. We came in and, and we literally dominated in terms of the market. And we continued to bring in innovative features like instant VM recovery and, and sandboxing technologies and have, have just continued to grow. We have a huge customer base, over 200,000 customers. You know, so, and, and a lot of the incumbents you know, have, have definitely taken notice. Um, and you know, they've developed a lot of positioning against us and those types of things. But you know, it's kind of, that's the idea of, of being a disruptor, is when you come from nowhere in 10 years to you know, all the top competitors you know, having you know, tear sheets on you, it's, it's, it's a pretty big deal. So VMware enabled you guys to be competitive with the virtualization. Yeah. You guys took advantage, made a great utility, mm -hmm. and rose to dominance. Yep. Congratulations. But now we have cross-cloud, yes. which by the way, <laughs> is kind of vaporware right now. But yeah. how do you guys fit into that? Again, and how does that timing affect your business? Well, actually, we made an announcement last Tuesday in terms of the Veeam availability platform for the hybrid cloud, where we talked about the fact that customers have data in the private cloud in, you know, on-prem, they've got data in a managed cloud, maybe through a service provider, and they also have data then in the public cloud. And from an availability perspective, we want to be able to provide availability for the data, for the customer's data, no matter where it's at. And just like VMware, we have also announced, you know, a number of, of new and additional products that fit into that platform that we'll be releasing over the next, uh, you know, six to eight months. When you think about the challenges of availability as we move from backup to availability, how has that changed the relationship between IT and business? Well, I mean, it's, it's IT showing how the business, you know, it, it, when you go to the business, you can say, well, how much did the last downtime cost you, right? You know, what, how often do you, you know, it's not about how often do you back up, it's about, you know, what does downtime cost you? Does it, you know, there's a dollar amount, but there's also a loss of brand reputation, a loss of confidence from your employees if you have downtime and those types of things. So from the business perspective, we can say, you know, you, knew, you need availability, you know, you, you, you know that because you know, you've had events or whatever, you've seen public events of companies going down, yeah. so how do you protect yourselves against that and how do you make sure that you're available 24-7, 365? But specifically when you say availability, you're talking about data availability, right? Right. So yeah. talk a little bit about this notion of, ha of, a, of, a, of an IT professional or someone in the VMware ecosystem now having a conversation with the business person about data as an asset that has to be kept available anytime, 
regardless of the circumstances. Is that, are you training your customers to have it? Because that's still not something, that's still something that's not natural for a whole bunch of IT professionals. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely right, yeah. So, but if you look uh, at the evolution in the last uh, 10 years, so uh, IT was very important. Now it's critically strategic to any business. So because most of the new products that businesses are releasing or uh, providing to their customers are digital or uh, have a very large digital component, that means they have to operate 24-7, 365. Ten years ago, 5% of our applications and data was mission critical. Now 50, sometimes 100% because our business relies on data and applications running in this hybrid cloud. Uh, so this morning you probably woke up and used already 10, 20 services from your company, starting from email, um, uh, tickets, uh, weather, uh, your calendar, and so on. So you are using IT services. So you have to have access to this data and services 24-7, 365. What used to be hours and days now requires seconds and minutes of uh, recovery, right? So, uh, and that's where the biggest difference between the traditional legacy approach to data and application. And by the way, also the amount of data and number of applications grew not just tenfold in the last 10 years, but 100 or 1,000. So we're using 100 times more applications or 1,000 more applications and 1,000 more uh, uh, sources of data. And it's that much more deeply embedded in the business, the result of that data. And one of the things I really like about your story is that it does have IT moving above the notion of technology availability, which increasingly is well understood and not as big an issue, to data availability, which is really the asset that the business is focused on and always was, even if technology people thought about the hardware or the you know, storage, whatever else it might be. Is that something, are, again, going back to what I said before, is that conversation becoming more natural as you not only work with IT people, but business people as well? That's an excellent question. So we, at our company, we define our core customer. Our core customer is somebody who understands deeply the technology, the virtualization technology, the modern storage technologies, the modern networking technology, the modern software-defined technologies. And that person is responsible to build a new modern hybrid uh, cloud, but that person has a, a business uh, person to report to. Maybe it's CIO, maybe it's COO. So our core customer is this technical person. We are helping that technical person to have this conversation with the, his CEO, CEO uh, CIO, or COO, or this uh, C-level people. Yes, this is our job to help him or her to have this, uh, to translate the IT benefits into the business benefits. Guys, I'd love to get your perspective because one, you've been successful as a company, certainly growing and you know, ramping up and, and the new cloud models are perfectly positioned for what you guys are trying to do. So congratulations on that. But given the fact that you've been in the ecosystem for so long and been such an integral part of not only creating disruptive value, as you said, <laughs> but being a witness and being a participant in the ecosystem. Can you share your opinion on, on the number one question I get all the time res with respect to VMworld is what's going on in the ecosystem? We need kind of a weather report. Is it, what's going on? I mean, obviously it's changing, it's shifting, it's growing, multiple products I mentioned earlier. Um, it wasn't just the one guy anymore, one persona they were targeting. There's now multiple aspects of the ecosystem. What's going on? Is it growing? Is it shrinking? Is it consolidating? Is it shifting? What is the state of the ecosystem? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's, always, it's, it's always kind of in flux a little bit. You know, you've got old technologies that move out, new technologies that move in, and you can see it on the show floor every year with, you know, how big is that vendor's booth or, you know, vendors that used to be there but aren't there anymore, and, and you know, it's just, it is that shifting landscape of, of, of the ecosystem. But, you know, I think the nice thing from a VMware perspective is they've built a very good ecosystem. There's, you know, a, a lot of, of partners, a lot of great partners, you know, down there that, that work within within that ecosystem and, and continue to, to help make it grow. So, you know, it, it's going to shift year after year. Robust though, so it's healthy. Yeah, it, I, I, I think it is. You know, if you look, you know, if you, if you just look down on the solutions exchange floor, you know, it, it, gets, it gets bigger every year. So it's, it's not getting smaller. Ravi, what's your thoughts? Where's it going? I mean, where's it going to? Let's, let's skate to where the puck is going to be, so to speak. <laughs> We're trying to understand that. I think uh, as companies mature, they learn to uh, 
uh, work in a car petition, right? So the car petition is the word in this industry. So uh, everybody is trying to uh, compete, but also partner with each other. So uh, maybe uh, EMC and Dell were competitors. Now they're, they're one company, right? So, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so on. So VMware is trying to find also other partners. Uh, in clouds on stage, that's a big... That's shocking. Exactly. Salesforce, IBM, this morning. and yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they announce a similar partnership with uh, with another Azure. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe I, we'll maybe. see. Maybe I know. I, I wouldn't be surprised because yeah, this is they have this, to. Kelsinger's Planet Plan means mandates yeah. multiple exactly. clouds means relationships yeah. exactly at least exactly. through APIs. So, I mean, I mean, exactly. which is kind of lightweight, but yeah. So, final question to wrap up: uh, What's your walk away takeaway? from VMworld this year? What do you take back and share with your colleagues? What would you tweet on Twitter? What was your big, what's the big takeaway this year? What's the theme? What's your, what's your notes say? Uh, to me, uh, this is exactly what we just discussed. VMware is moving to a new world and opening uh, more opportunities for us as the ecosystem partner. And uh, again, they are partnering with more partners such as IBM, which by the way, we also, Veeam was also part of that uh, big announcement. Uh, one of the four, vendors mentioned in the IBM slash VMware press release. So, uh, as VMware... The lucrative is, business opportunities for you guys, you yes, see that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As VMware is maturing as the company and uh, moving into new partnerships, it opens more and more opportunities for us to innovate, to deliver together with VMware and the ecosystem of partners, the solutions that our customers are uh, need, uh, needing. And, and I think, you know, from my standpoint, it, it validates this, this idea of cross-cloud, right? I mean, we talked about it last week at a big, you know, big event that we had, you know, and then we come here and VMware is saying, you know, essentially the same thing. Obviously, different perspective um, in terms of what they do, but it really validates kind of what we said. And so, yeah. you know, that's the, you know, it's, it, it is hybrid cloud, it's cross-cloud, and I think the good thing is we're lockstep in, in with them. Guys, thanks so much. Everything's clicking together. Big opportunities, good opportunities to create value and make money, but also create new technologies and disruption. So that's the state of the ecosystem. Thanks for sharing. Veeam here inside theCUBE. Of Thank course, you. you're the big party tonight. Plug for that if you're watching <laughs> and you're here on site. Um, check it out. Uh, this is theCUBE. I'm Sean with Peter Burris. We'll be right back with more after this short break from day two coverage here at the Hangspace at VMworld 2016.